Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mastering Data Warehousing and Business Intelligence series. I'm so glad you're here because today we're diving into something super important, the architecture and components of a data warehouse and business intelligence system. This is the backbone of how organizations turn raw data into actionable insights. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you've been following along since the first video, awesome. You already know why data warehousing and BI are game changers for businesses. Now it's time to dig deeper and understand how all of this works under the hood. All right, let's get started. Think of building a data warehouse like constructing a house. You need a strong foundation, sturdy walls, plumbing, electricity, you name it. Similarly, in a data warehousing setup, there are key architectural components working together seamlessly. These include things like data sources, ETL processes, storage layers, OLAP engines, and finally, the tools used for consuming or analyzing the data. Today, we'll break down each of these components one by one so you can see the big picture and appreciate how they fit together. Let's start with where everything begins data sources. Imagine your data warehouse as a giant library. But before books or data can sit neatly on shelves, they have to come from somewhere, right? Uh, that somewhere is what we call data sources. Data sources can be structured, semi-structured, or even completely unstructured. For example, think about back-end databases from operational systems. These are highly organized, like Excel spreadsheets. Then you have files like CSVs, XMLs, or logs from websites. These might not be as clean, but still contain valuable information. And let's not forget APIs, IoT devices, social media feeds, and even paper documents that haven't been digitized yet. The variety of data sources is both a blessing and a challenge. On one hand, you get tons of useful information. On the other hand, integrating all these different formats requires careful planning. So once we gather data from these sources, the next step is to process it. That's where ETL comes in. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, Load. Think of it as the magic wand that turns messy, chaotic data into something meaningful and usable. First up, extraction. This is simply pulling data from its original source. Sometimes you extract everything at once, what we call a full load. Other times you only grab new or updated records using techniques like change data capture. Extraction can happen online or offline, depending on the system, and sometimes the source pushes the data to us, while other times we pull it ourselves. Once extracted, the transformation phase kicks in. This is where the real heavy lifting happens. We clean up errors, remove duplicates, combine related data sets, enrich the data with additional context, perform calculations, and aggregate numbers. Imagine taking a pile of Lego bricks scattered across the floor and sorting them by color, size, and shape. That's essentially what transformation does. Finally, loading takes the transformed data and inserts it into the target system. Without getting too technical, just know that loading ensures the data ends up exactly where it needs to be for analysis. Now that our data is cleaned and ready, where do we store it? Enter the storage layer, a critical part of the architecture. There are several ways to implement this, depending on the organization's needs. One option is an operational data store. Think of this as a temporary holding area for real-time data. If you need quick answers to questions without waiting for the full data warehouse to update, an operational data store is perfect. Often, the landing area where raw data first arrives becomes an operational data store. Then there's the Enterprise Data Warehouse, which serves as the central hub for decision support across the entire company. It organizes data in a way that makes sense for reporting and analytics, classifying it by subject areas like sales, marketing, or finance. For smaller teams or specific departments, you might use a Data Mart instead. A Data Mart is essentially a mini version of the Enterprise Data Warehouse tailored to a particular line of business. For instance, the finance team could have their own data mart focused solely on financial metrics. And lastly, there's the concept of a data lake. Unlike traditional warehouses, a data lake stores all types of data, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured at any scale. It's like having a massive filing cabinet where nothing gets thrown away, giving analysts flexibility to explore data however they want. 
Okay, now that our data is stored, how do we actually interact with it? That's where the OLAP engine or semantic layer comes in. OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing, which basically means it's built for fast, flexible analysis. Think of this as the translator between complex database queries and user-friendly reports. There are different storage modes for OLAP, like ROLAP, MOLAP, and HOLAP, each with its own strengths. Regardless of the mode, OLAP allows users to slice, dice, roll up, and drill down through data easily. Picture slicing a pizza into smaller pieces or zooming in on a map. That's essentially what OLAP operations enable. In some cases, pre-aggregated tables replace the need for an OLAP engine altogether. Either way, the goal is to make data exploration intuitive and efficient. We've covered a lot so far, but none of this matters unless people can actually use the data. That's where the consumption layer, or BI tools, come into play. Operational reports give day-to-day -day insights, while dashboards provide visual snapshots of performance. Ad hoc analysis lets users ask custom questions and self-service business intelligence empowers non-technical folks to explore data independently. Advanced analytics take things further with data mining, machine learning, and predictive modeling. Imagine forecasting future trends based on historical patterns or identifying hidden opportunities within your data. Pretty cool, right? And it doesn't stop there. Modern business intelligence applications extend beyond desktops to web and mobile platforms, making data accessible anytime, anywhere. Whether you're checking KPIs on your phone during a commute or embedding analytics into another app via APIs, the possibilities are endless. Woo, that was a lot to unpack, but hopefully you now have a clearer understanding of the architecture and components behind data warehousing and business intelligence. From diverse data sources to powerful ETL processes, robust storage solutions, interactive OLAP engines, and versatile consumption tools, every piece plays a vital role in delivering value. Remember, the ultimate goal is to empower organizations to make smarter decisions faster. By mastering these components, you'll be well-equipped to contribute to that mission. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might benefit. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and feel free to leave your thoughts or questions in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and happy learning. See you soon.